If you struggle with shyness or social anxiety, check out our free no BS training course with actual useful advice you can do from home. None of that just get out there nonsense. The link is in the description below. For now, let's get to today's question. The question, what is the difference between introvertism, shyness, and autism? Answer by Joe Eberhardt. While it's possible that someone may be shy, introverted, and on the autism spectrum, the three things aren't at all related. That you can be a shy extrovert or an outgoing introvert, and either of those may apply to someone on the autism spectrum. Introversion. In its simplest terms, an introvert is someone who regains energy through being alone. They get their energy from an internal source. Being introverted doesn't mean being shy or socially awkward or disliking people. In fact, many introverts love spending time with people, and are very socially adept. However being amongst crowds, noise, and bustle is physically, mentally, and emotionally exhausting for an introvert. Many introverts will avoid spending a lot of time in highly social situations for that reason. 1. The opposite of an introvert is an extrovert which is to say, someone who regains energy through external sources. For an extrovert, being amongst crowds, noise, and bustle fills them with energy, so they tend to seek out such situations. Note, introversion and extroversion actually exist on a spectrum. Most of us fall somewhere in the middle. It just happens that modern society has decided extroversion is normal or, at least, preferable. Which is, in the vernacular, a load of waddle. Shyness. Someone who is shy feels anxious or fearful about interacting with other people. They may desperately want to find connection with others they may, in fact, be highly extroverted and need interaction with others in order to energize but their social fears hold them back. Someone who is shy may avoid talking to people for fear of being judged or ridiculed. Like an introvert. A shy person may avoid highly social situations, but in this case the avoidance comes from a place of fear. 2. Shyness is something that can be overcome. It's not a natural part of a person's wiring, so to speak, but a learned response. Shyness is often a manifestation of low self-confidence or social anxiety. Autism Spectrum Disorder People on the spectrum have neurological differences to neurotypical, or normal people differences that begin in the brain before they are even born. Autism is not a social disorder, although often a key symptom in diagnosing ASD is a lack of understanding slash confidence in social situations. People on the spectrum often have difficulty interpreting social cues and understanding social conventions. Or, rather, people on the spectrum have difficulty instinctively doing those things many people with ASD can learn how to do both. But autism exists on a spectrum, and is the term used to describe a particular neurological difference. It's not related to introversion slash extroversion or shyness directly. Although feeling different may lead to someone with ASD becoming shy out of fear of being rejected. Footnotes 1. Psychology Today 2. Psychology Today Answer by Rebecca Knowles Photo by Will Hay 55 via Flickr Creative Commons And the whole energy discussion about how being with people drains us while it energizes extroverts is compelling, but nobody has really been able to pin down empirically what that means. What is energy, in this context? Full Source 4 Ways to Overcome Shyness in 14 Days, Movita. Well, a very interesting young thinker, Jennifer O. Grimes, has noticed this too. Webb already heard Grimes' energy theory, and Webb heard from her mentor, Jonathan M. Cheek, at Wellesley. There is such a struggle at what is at the core of introversion slash extroversion, Grimes told me in a recent interview. What we were noticing was a popular movement to bring a little more clarity to the definition, but Terry's not been an awful lot of psychometric work with that. Grimes, Cheek, and Norm developed a four-factor model of introversion, dividing it into social introversion, prefers solitude to people, thinking introversion, reflective and introspective, anxious introversion, shy and ruminative, and inhibited introversion, resists new experiences. Grimes' thesis explains that if you take each of the factors this new model proposes and follow it along a continuum to their most extreme expressions, they correlate with the widely used Baron Cohen autism spectrum quotient. Depending on how much we have of each factor, and how they interact with other personality traits, we can be simply introverted or, moving along the continuum, have Asperger's syndrome or, Moving further yet, have autism. Consider, for example, that many of us tend to think slowly and are not quick at communicating. At the introvert level, no big deal. Take that communication difficulty and move it along the scale Grimes proposes and you get to Asperger's and then autism. That same with our tendency to focus deeply, at the healthy end of the scale that can be perseverance. 
take it further, and you hit perseveration, which is not so good. Grime suspects Aaron's sensitivity theory is outside of introversion. That sounds like it belongs more in openness, the tendency to become frazzled and overwhelmed coupled with physical sensitivity is its own thing. Grimes' theory is an interesting approach to painting down the slippery definition of introversion and, she says, it might help us gain deeper understanding of autism. There are some things we haven't yet figured out about autism that we have figured out about introversion. Introverts who do spend a lot of time in introspection have a good account of what it's like. We could use the studies that we've done so far, with both areas, to perhaps scaffold each other. Answer by, Peter Howe. As we learn more about the neurology involved some now and compelling theories have come forward. First shyness. Despite the name, shyness is probably the true opposite of extroversion. A person is most often shy due to some form of social anxiety or inhibition. To explain what we recently learned about introversion, I'm going to use an analogy. My father-in-law recently bought a fancy new car. It doesn't just have cruise control, but can even automatically maintain a safe distance from the car in front of you. It also has automatic lane keeping. Once on the highway, you can take your hands off the wheel and your feet off the pedals. You're still responsible for the car, and you're still making the decisions, but this way of driving is much less taxing than the old way. With my old car, you still have to constantly monitor your position in the lane, and relative to other cars and constantly make adjustments. Even a moment's distraction and you're in danger. It's much more tiring. Non-introverts appear to have subsystems within the brain that do for conversation, what the automation in the car do for driving. They are preconceous, let you offload some of the work of carrying a conversation, while still leaving you in control. Introverts lack these features. They need to use their conscious brain to perform these tasks. S. Like driving an old car, it's much more taxing. The extra mental work is tiring and so introverts tend to get exhausted by human contact and need time alone to recharge. An introvert may not even be aware that they're processing and managing a conversation differently than others, they just know that sooner or later, it becomes exhausting. If lacking certain social subsystems sounds familiar, that's a characteristic of autism. A new and compelling theory one, puts introversion within the same spectrum as autism. Interestingly, this means that introversion is not the opposite of extroversion, but independent of it. You could be an introvert who is outgoing and loves talking to people, just in smaller doses and then you need to retire. That would make you an introverted extrovert. Footnotes 1. HTTP slash slash e dot t dot d CLA at you slash cf slash cfe 0003 